What's going on everyone and welcome back to another review. Today we're taking a look at a pretty artsy piece of work. A game that resonates with the works of Wes Anderson. And I mean, look at this design. It's pretty much why we all bought it. It's pretty damn neat, huh? Now some of my favorite movies are Claymation, so when I saw this, I knew that I had to review it. There was no question about it. But the question that you guys might have is, is Harold Halibut worth a $35 price tag? My name is Tanner. This is For Your Money, a different kind of review. Now before we get started, this is a narrative driven game, and a lot of folks probably already knew this, but if you don't, this is heavy on the anecdote side and extremely limited whenever it comes to the gameplay. So I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. During the Cold War, people thought the end of planet Earth was upon them. The All Water Corp tossed funds for a spaceship to be built known as the Fedora 1. This ship contained a group of people that lived aboard in individual models with a goal to travel to a new planet that was thought to be habitable. Now we're going to skip 200 years later and they finally arrive and find out they have no landmass that they can live on. And to top it all off, there's a toxic atmosphere. So not knowing what to do, fate decided for them as solar winds knocked them down into the planet and underwater where they've been for the last 50 years. Fast forward to today and you play as Harold, a maintenance man who is constantly dragged through the dirt by some of the citizens aboard the Fedora 1, a man just trying to find his purpose other than unclogging tubes and washing graffiti off the wall, but his time is upon him. As the people aboard the Fedora learned that Earth was never destroyed, Everyone wants to get back. Now with the relaunch window approaching, only 89 days are left. They have to quickly solve a sudden energy crisis that is halting the plan. How are they going to do it? What will they do? Well, Harold and his professor have a few tricks up their sleeves. That about scratches the surface of what I believe is to be a 700 to 1000 page script of dialogue for this game. And I mean, yes, scratches the surface because you're going to meet a lot of people throughout your time in Harold Halibut and no one is the same and everybody has their own problems and with their own side stories that in turn look for Harold to help them which is a big theme that's going to be brought to your attention by um, Buddy the Mail Carrier. Why gloom about being stuck in an ocean when each person is their own world? And he got to be a part of a new world every time he interacted with somebody. And for this game, Buddy is 1000% correct. The diverse set of characters is awing and it really helps build a connection with the Fedora 1 and everyone inside of it, no matter how nasty some of them acted towards Harold. Now this is a very intricate and thought out story and it has a lot of puzzle pieces fitting within its 12 to 10 hour gameplay. It has a lot of underlining messages as well and some of them can be easily spotted, others aren't that easy. Now some of the big takeaways are why do we have more than enough, why are people more important, and of course resource farming. It has a lot of themes but I do think they juggle them decently. Although I do have to say that some stuff definitely could have been cut down a tad because of the timing. Which brings me to the big downside of the game and I think it's going to be an issue for quite a lot of people and that is the pacing. This game is slow. I mean it's going to take you 4-5 to five hours to really get to where things kick off and grip you. And for that time frame you're going to be doing one of the only things that this game has to offer for gameplay and that is fetch quests. So you're going to be doing the most redundant thing in gaming while peeling your eyes back hoping for the story to throw a bone your way just to keep you going. And just when you think it's never going to happen, they're going to slip you a small treat and you're going to repeat all this until it begins to take off. Now I know this is going to turn a lot of people away and like I said it is a narrative game but the pacing for sure could have been handled differently to keep your interest from dwindling to empty because by the time you got something to fill your tank you were only about a quarter full. Now it's a fantastic story if you stick with it but can you see it through? A lot of the positive reviews that I saw on Steam only had two to four hours and they're still sitting there so I don't think a lot of people actually finished it. As for the gameplay, I mentioned one aspect, the fetch quest. The only other thing you're going to do are a few mini games, and I mean a few. They are spread out, they are short, and it's usually going to involve you unscrewing a panel to help fix a 3D printer or plugging in a cord to the corresponding outlet. Not much, but it is what we've got. So this is another big question. Is the game fun? It's kind of relative if you ask me. In the sense of entertainment, I'm going to say no. This game suffers major from repetition. I mean, you're going to wake up, read your PDA, look for an objective to do, do said objective, and it's going to take you from point A to point B to point A to point B to point C. 
go to bed, wake up, and repeat. It's a tough loop, and a lot of people are not going to be able to push through it. Now, what did turn me on about this game, though, was the design. Like I said earlier, it's claymation, and those are a huge part of my entertainment life. Like, I've seen Coraline numerous times, Isle of Dogs, Kubo, and one of my all-time favorites, Mad God. So, yeah, I had to buy this Wes Anderson-inspired, or I believe inspired game. It's quirky. It's awkward. The character designs are some of the best I've seen in gaming with this kind of style. And I do know that a lot of the game's budget had to go towards the design of the characters and the environments. It's no small feat. To add to all that, they have an astounding cast of voice actors from different ethnicities to make the Fedora one seem like an equal opportunity from the start. And then we have the soundtrack. Any cutscene or any sequence you're going to be in it is going to add emotion. It's going to add excitement, sadness, even worry. So I'm going to stop talking and let you guys listen for yourself. Oh. I know, right? I have never looked at it this way before. We only had the same stuff to look at, mostly. Gotta try find new angles. Huh. Did you read that somewhere? No, I don't think so anyway. Here. Uh, not for me, thanks. And not for you. Relax, it's just gum. More to life? Cleaning, fixing, running all around. Wait, what's that sound? Isn't there more to life? I clean and I fix Till my legs feel like bricks My best friend is a mop I work till I drop I know, it's chilly Say, how did you find your way to the fedora? Hmm, it wasn't easy Dark and chilly, I don't like either. But once I had started, I just wanted to see what there was. I had to keep going. Next thing I knew, very light. Less chilly, lots of owl. Then you, shouting at me. When you tell it like that, it doesn't sound like a great experience. Is it worth $35? Honestly, no. But I say $25, so... $10 off, it's not bad. And the thing is, the price is just slightly in the wrong ballpark. But I also want to give it more than Edith Finch or Call of the Sea because this game is something slightly more magical. And then we also have games on Steam like Kingdom Come Deliverance, it's $30, or Detroit Become Human, it's $40. Both are very story heavy and really good at it too. And then they have fun gameplay or quick time events. Harold Halibut has a wicked design, and it has a really awesome story, but the only fall-off is, is the bad pacing, and really the big fault of that is the gameplay being what it is. So for 25 bucks, you're damn right you should pick it up if you want a good narrative that also delivers an artisanal look on life and the people in it. That's all I gotta say about Harold Halibut. We'll see what gets my attention next.